Uh, my name is Stefan Baldus. I'm uh, running the Department of Cardiology at the Heart Center of the University Hospital in Cologne in Germany. My name is Volker Rudolf. Um, I'm running the Cardiology Department at the Heart and Diabetes Center in North Rhine-Westphalia in Bad Oeynhausen, Germany. So we know that patients with heart failure and secondary mitral regurgitation are symptomatic and have a poor prognosis. Current guidelines recommend that in patients who are operable, surgical therapy is the way to go. However, we also have transcatheter repair techniques, in particular um, tier techniques, so edge-to-edge -edge therapy with a clip device for these patients, but there's no trial randomizing patients eligible for surgery with secondary mitral regurgitation to surgery or edge-to-edge -edge therapy. So the Matterhorn trial was a one-to-one -one randomized trial um, which was run in 16 centers across Germany and it was designed as a non-inferiority trial comparing transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge repair versus mitral valve repair or replacement and to be um, eligible for the trial patients had to have secondary mitral regurgitation um, an ejection fraction of at least 20%. They had to be symptomatic despite optimized guideline directed medical therapy. They had to be high risk as determined by the local heart team. Um, no other valve orders or no other severe valve disorders were allowed to be present and CRT and um, um, revascularization procedures uh, were not to be performed within the last 30 days before enrollment. Um, with regard to outcome measures, our primary efficacy outcome uh, was a combination of death, heart failure, rehospitalization, mitral valve free intervention assist device implantation, stroke, determined at one year. And the other important outcome measure was um, the major um, uh, safety endpoint, which was a combination of major adverse events uh, determined at um, 30 days. So we included 210 patients, actually 208 patients underwent the dedicated procedures. These uh, patients had a mean age of 70 years. 40% of these patients were female and the um, mean ejection fraction was 42%. In fact, only um, less than 50% of the entire cohort had an ejection fraction below 40%. So with regard to the primary efficacy endpoint um, at one year, we um, observed um, an incidence of 22.5% in the surgical group and a lower incidence of 16.7% in the interventional groups. And um, because of this difference, we were clearly able to demonstrate that the intervention was non-inferior compared to surgery. With regard to the safety endpoint, um, we observed an incidence of 54.8% in the surgical group compared to an incidence of 14.9% in the interventional group. So also uh, a much lower and statistically highly significant difference in favor of the intervention. Well, that's an interesting question which we cannot answer at this stage. I mean, as I pointed out earlier, we have a uh, the interesting finding that uh, a larger subset of patients indeed had preserved left ventricular function and secondary mitral regurgitation, presumably atrial mitral regurgitation. And it's going to be interesting to, to focus on, on this subgroup of patients um, in, an, in a subsequent analysis. But apart from this, we don't have any indication that any of the patients and patient subgroups included into the trial didn't derive this benefit we, we saw with respect to non-inferiority in, in our trial. So I think in, in our view, um, it's important to, um, to highlight that actually both procedures did quite well in re reducing mitral regurgitation. And, and, and so both procedures can be done in patients. However, what we saw was um, that um, while um, the intervention was non-inferior with regard to efficacy, it was superior with regard to safety and so if you have a patient where you're considering to do surgery for technical reasons for reasons of comorbidity or whatever you you can do it but you just have to aware that there's a price of just higher safety and rents that you have to pay 
Well, I guess what is extremely important is to have a longer term follow up of our patients. Obviously, one year is, is not enough to, to finally judge efficacy, perhaps even long term safety of the one or the other intervention. So, so this is um, our main focus. But we, as you said, we will also focus on, uh, on uh, further evaluation of, of subgroups in this style.